Hello and welcome. Glad to have you with us today. This is our class on the Beatitudes of Jesus Christ from Matthew chapter 5. Today's lesson takes us to Beatitude uh, number 9. This is, this is part 10 of our series. And this covers the last beatitude. Now, we will have more classes after this. We've got some more things I want to talk to you about. But this will really kind of wrap up the last of the beatitudes. And So uh, let's spend some time together. I hope you get your Bible. Turn with us to Matthew chapter 5. Get your outline. Get your pen so you can write down some things. And let's kind of journey together as we look at this wonderful, wonderful passage of Jesus Christ. This is the ninth time that Jesus will use the word blessed in this section. Again, remembering that is a blessed life. It is a joyful life. It's a life that's found pleasing to God. And what we find in this beatitude, this beatitude particularly seems at odds with the way the world would think and even the way we would think. We would not generally think the blessed life is one that is uh, injured or insulted or hurt or persecuted. But the Lord will bring that out to us. So Matthew chapter 5, and let's begin in verse 11 and verse 12, where there the text tells us, it says, Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Most commentators will lump this beatitude with the one we did last week. Uh, there it says, uh, blessed are you who have been persecuted. And may just kind of put this as one long continuation. But I like a separation here because once again, the Lord is beginning this sentence with the word blessed, looking at each one in that way. A lot of similarities to the last one. And again, talking about the persecuted life. Uh, you'll notice in here as he talks about this, he says that when uh, they speak evil against you falsely, this uh, reminds us of what Peter said, that we should never suffer as an evildoer or a murderer or a troublesome meddler. Uh, those people who suffer are getting what they deserve because they were troublesome. Here, you're suffering for righteousness' sake. And that's what the Lord has before us. Now, some interesting things we'll kind of note as we begin this. And you'll see this on your outline. And again, it's just helpful to kind of be mindful of these things. First of all, this is the first time Jesus uses the expression you in this setting. Before this, it was always kind of third person. Blessed are they. Blessed are those. But now he says, blessed are you. And so we'll talk about that in just a moment here. But that's interesting just to make that note and that observation. We also see and appreciate that this is the longest of the Beatitudes. It covers two verses, uh, verse 11 and verse 12. Most of the Beatitudes are, are simple, short statements, uh, very easy to memorize. But this one is a bit longer in that. We also note that this Beatitude repeats from the one before, as we just mentioned. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of similarities. And most folks will just kind of make one continuation here. They just see that this is just a continuation of what Jesus says. But we've made these separate in that way. And then this Beatitude carries the attitude that Jesus wants his disciples to have while they're being persecuted. They are to understand that they are blessed and not to retaliate, not to fight back, not to become what the evil people are doing to them. And we need to see and appreciate that. Now, four things we need to notice, and again, this is on your outline, a couple of things to, to uh, uh, fill in as we do this. First of all, as Jesus uses the word you here, he's indicating and showing his disciples that they too will suffer. And we'll bring this up here just a little bit later on in our context as we notice some things. There, there's a word that's used in this beatitude that's used of Jesus Christ later on, and we'll, we'll make that bridge as we look at that. Not only that, but for the righteousness sake is parallel to my name's sake. And this is the blessing upon not just suffering in general. I mean, there's a lot of world suffering. People are suffering because of the pandemic. People suffer because of hunger and poverty and other reasons. People in war zones suffer. This is not general suffering. This is a righteous type of suffering, suffering for the sake of Jesus Christ. And that is a distinction. And there is a narrow uh, application here, and that is those who are Christians. And then we also notice that this persecution has a broad definition. As we look here in verse 11, he says, men will revile you, 
persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you. Uh, that, that's a broad spectrum. Uh, to say evil things is a verbal attack. That hurts your feelings. The word persecute means to chase down, to injure. That's physical abuse. Revile, again, it carries all of those things together. And so when Jesus uses this idea, it's, it's not one or the other. It's, it's a long spectrum. And we need to see how important that is. You know, you and I may not suffer the broken bones as the early disciples did, but we know what it's like for people to walk away from us because they don't accept what we believe. We know what it's like for people to kind of say things under their lips or to roll their eyes at us. Now, those are forms of persecution, and those are some things that we see with this. We also notice in, in this section here that persecution ends. Uh, but there's a heavenly home awaiting the righteous. That's why they're blessed. The reward, as we get to it at the end here, is going to be great. Great is your reward in heaven. That's what the Lord is bringing out to each of us here. And so, as we notice, this beatitude is just the opposite of the way the world thinks. The world will see absolutely no blessing whatsoever in being hated or being persecuted. Got some verses here in your outline. Let's just read these. Acts chapter 5, verse 40 and 41. And it says there, after calling the apostles in, they flogged them. The flog is to beat. They flogged them and ordered them to speak no more in the name of Jesus and then released them. 41 says, so they went on their way from the presence of the council rejoicing that they had been considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. Blessed, rejoicing, glad in these things. On your outline, you'll see this passage from Luke chapter 6. This is how Luke uh, uses this beatitude. He says, blessed are you when men hate you, ostracize you, and insult you, and scorn your name as evil for the sake of the Son of Man. Be glad in that day, leap for joy, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way their fathers used to treat the prophets. And what we'll see as we get down to that connection at the end there is uh, the prophets were worthy. They, they were godly people. You're doing what they have done. You're experiencing what they experienced, and that's just a joyous a fellowship with that. But notice again these words from Luke. Uh, be glad in that day and leap for joy. Again, uh, hard for us to put that in there. But, but the idea is that we have counted worthy to suffer for Jesus. People saw that we carry the name of Jesus. And we don't retaliate. We don't fight back. We don't get even. But we rejoice in the Lord. Acts chapter 16, again on your outline, as it talks about the Apostle Paul. It says that they beat them with rods. and says, when they had struck them with many blows, they threw them into the inner prison. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises, uh, singing hymns of praise to God. Again, there's that blessed life, being counted worthy to be considered righteous for God. And in this, there are two reminders we need to see. The first reminder is the world hates because you're not in the world. This passage in John 15 says that. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, because of this, the world hates you. And as we said last week, they hated Jesus, they're going to hate you. And so that's, that's the connection Jesus is making in this. This takes us to Romans chapter 12, where the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed. Or the book of James, it says, friendship with the world is hostility toward God. The world's going one way, we're going a different direction. The world listens to one drummer, we're listening to Jesus Christ. And so because we're not of the world, we don't use the definitions, we don't use the concept of success that the world does. We're not after the same thing the world does. We stand for morals. We want righteousness to prevail. The world hates you. Now, the, the only way to get away from that and, and this is not the way you're supposed to do, is, is to conform yourself and to be like the world. And when you're like the world, there's no difference. And the Lord doesn't want that. The second thing we need to remind ourselves of, that said here, Jesus suffered and we will suffer ourselves. Uh, now, over in the book of 1 Peter, as we mentioned last week in that study about persecution, 
where Peter gives us a great reminder of what Jesus did. He said in 1 Peter chapter 2 and in verse 23, he says, while being reviled, he did not revile in return. Well, again, no, notice our, our passage. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad. The idea of being reviled is found within that idea there. And so Jesus suffered, we will suffer too. On your outline, you notice a history of righteous people being persecuted. And I didn't really go through the details. I just listed a few examples of these. And it would be good for you to take a pen and just take a few moments and write down such things. Uh, we begin all the way back in Genesis with Abel. And Abel offered God a godly sacrifice, but he paid his life for that because of how he was persecuted. Go through Joseph, David, Elijah. We could put in there Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Jeremiah, even in Jesus' times of John the Baptist, how they suffered and they were persecuted. And so what Jesus is saying here is what you're going through is not unique. It's not just new to our times. It's not just because of you. The world has hated righteous people always. They treated the prophets this way. They're going to treat you this way. And the reason is not so much you, it's because the world likes darkness rather than light. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, which we have listed here, after mentioning all these heroes of faith, and when you go through them, nearly every single name listed had some form of suffering. It says in verse 32, And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, Samuel, and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdom, kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting the release in order that they may obtain a better resurrection. And others experienced mockings and scourgings, yes, chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were tempted, they were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and ill-treated, men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and caves and holes and ground. And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised. Now, there's a, there's a side thought there. And, of course, a side thought for us is, well, why didn't God do something to take care of his people? Why did God let his people be abused and beaten and poorly treated? Why wasn't God's people living in the palaces? Why wasn't God's people leading the armies? Why wasn't the wicked suffering and going through wrong things? Well, partly because, again, to what we've been saying, the world hates the light. The world hates righteousness. The world hates God. If people suffer because of bad, then they become good for the wrong reason. The only reason they become good is so I don't suffer anymore. But when people suffer for being good, for being righteous, that's a testimony to their faith. And that says that our faith means something. And it's not about easy life. It's not about the substance in life. It's about a right relationship with God. So in this, the Lord would say, be glad, rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. Great is your reward. Uh, Paul would say in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 concerning this uh, comparison to the suffering of the present world to what we would receive it say, for momentary light afflictions producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond comparison. Nothing compares to that great reward in heaven. Paul would say in 2 Corinthians, or excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 4, that there awaits him the crown of righteousness. And again, another passage that we can list here in Romans chapter 8, and in verse 18, he would say, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's to be revealed to us. That's what he's describing there. And that's a great reward. 
why do we go through these things? Why are we insulted? Why do we allow ourselves to be persecuted? Why, why do we go do these things? Well, not only did Jesus walk those steps, and we follow the steps of Jesus, but those steps lead to a home prepared for us in heaven. Great is your reward. The suffering for now is temporary. The suffering for now is just a little bit. The eternal weight of glory never, ever ends. And that's the comparison the Bible makes to us. And so at the bottom of your outline here, I've kind of rewritten these Beatitudes in just kind of a modern way of thinking about them. And this might be a good thing just to cut out and tape in your Bible and kind of, kind of remember these things. But we begin with recognizing our insufficient ways. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Uh, we're bankrupt spiritually. And then we move to realizing that our sins broke the heart of God. Blessed are those who mourn uh, because of what those sins have done. And then the idea of totally submitting our lives to God. Uh, blessed are the humble or the gentle or the meek. Uh, the idea that we are now receptive to what God wants us to say. Eagerly desire to be right with God. That's hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Remembering to be forgiving. Blessed are the merciful. Becoming focused upon God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Being the, being, uh, bringing people, or excuse me, becoming uh, focused upon God. That's pure in heart. And then bringing people to God. That's the, the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. They're finding peace between man and God. And then the last two we've talked about are the persecuted. Rejoice when you have been wrong. Blessed are those uh, who are persecuted. And that's just a simple way of reminding ourselves what these are all about. And again, in this lesson, we need to realize that if you do what's right, you're going to be noticed. If you do what's right, the world is not going to appreciate it. If you do what's right, you're at the crossroads. Do I get the world to like me? Or do I continue to do what God wants me to do? And if I continue to do what God wants me to do, I may lose some friends. Some people may speak wrongly about me. Some people may not include me. Some people may hurt my feelings. Some people may actually try to hurt me. Uh, as we've just come off Thanksgiving a week or two ago, uh, the history of this country was about people who left England because of persecution went to Holland. Things weren't much better in Holland. So they came to America so they could worship God the way that they wanted to worship. To have not a state religion or a national religion, but the freedom to worship as we want. And what they were, they were a persecuted people. And, and all throughout religious history, we find this. And we find when people don't agree with others, whether we go back to the book of Acts and we see that with the Jews and early Christians, Romans and the Christians were all through the, throughout history. When people have not disagree, have disagreed with others, they have sought to stamp them out. They sought to silence their mouths. They sought, they, they sought to persecute them in ways that they shouldn't have. And so that brings us to this end. Now, again, as I said, a couple, couple more lessons we'll have here. And we hope that these will continue as we talk about the Beatitudes in our lives today and see how meaningful that will be. But from this lesson, we need to have courage, we need to have faith, we need to have trust as we walk onward with God. Thank you so much, and have a blessed day.